According to YouTube, behind the scenes content helps the viewer uh, connect with the creator. Um, so this is me standing farther back in a sense. This is behind the scenes. I hope you feel more connected. Um, my cat is behind the chair there if you look. Now that you're engaged and uh, connected to me, let's make a tutorial. So this is the animation we're gonna be making. It's really cool and uh, I made it for beginners and I made it so that it doesn't take forever to make. In fact, once we start building this, it's only gonna take us under 10 minutes to make this. Uh, this may not be the color we end with. I like the color. This is what we're creating. We're gonna be using EV, a little bit of volume. It's really fun. If you wanna grab the project file for this, you can get it on Patreon. If you don't know about my Patreon, I offer 10 procedural materials a month, two exclusive tutorials, and a bunch of other really cool things on there. If you wanna check that out, that's linked in the description. With that being said, let's, let's get on with this. All right, so let's get this going. Now, depending on how new you are to Blender, you may need to slow down the video. You can go and uh, kind of hit that like 0.2 or whatever and slow down the video. That's totally cool if you need to follow along or pause, whatever. Uh, but with that being said, we're gonna need a plane and then we're gonna hit S5, enter, control A, apply scale. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just stretch this out to right about here, control A and apply that scale. So now we have this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit M, new collection and call it loop. And we're gonna be adding everything into here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit shift A, collection instance loop. And then I'm gonna hold down control. Very important to hold down control for this. Control click and it's gonna to snap to grid and this is gonna make sure it's a loop. And then uh, shift A again, do that. And I want a bunch of these. So shift A, highlight shift A and add, you know, a bunch. I'm gonna do one more. All right, now I'm gonna hit the tilde key and click front. So that's when we import our camera. So shift A and get in a uh, camera and it's gonna be automatically pointing. I'm gonna hit the period key here. It's automatically be, gonna be pointing the way we want. I'm gonna lift it up a little bit and then bring it and then holding down control, I'm gonna bring it back and until it's on the negative five, at least for me, it's gonna be in the negative five. For you, it might be the positive five. Hit zero to go to the, the view. Now we have this. I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna go up here to the outliner, click on the camera and then bring my focal length to be a bit wider. And now we can jump straight into the shading tab. So first click on the camera icon and we're gonna switch over to Eevee and make sure your ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections and motion blur are all turned on. We're not gonna use all those, but rule of thumb, that's kind of where I keep them. World settings, we're gonna bring it down to black and then we're gonna click on this uh, right over here, the first plane we created. Go to the material section, click new. And then very important, we're gonna come down here we're gonna come down here and go from blend mode to alpha blend, and that's gonna help us with our transparency. Now that we're in the uh, shader tab here, I'm gonna click on this principle and delete it. Shift A, search, and we're gonna get a mix shader. Plug the shader into the surface, and we're gonna need two more nodes. We're gonna get, go ahead and get an emission, so search, EM, emission, shift A, search, get in a transparent BSDF. And let's just plug them here. Plug it here, then I'm gonna bring this up Shift A, click, and we'll get a color ramp. I'm gonna go from linear to constant so that whenever we're crunching in the texture, it's gonna be able to have kind of a hard edge. Uh, now we're gonna go ahead and get a brick texture. Now go to your edit preferences and in the add-ons, type in node and turn on the node wrangler right here. Just hit that check mark. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm hit control T having that brick texture Selected and we're going to use the object coordinate right here in the mapping. So just plug that there and on color plug that there And what we're going to get is something cool uh, In the mapping we're going to rotate our texture to be kind of diagonal like this We're going to bring our scale pretty far up We're going to bring our mortar smoothness to here and then bring our mortar size down So we can get kind of get these thin lines so we can stretch them out And then the color ramp is going to tell us how many we're going to get so let's go to the main render view here, which is just gonna give us a black background and then bring your emission up so we can get some glow and pick a, and pick a color. Now let's go ahead, I'm gonna highlight these two, I'm gonna hit G and now let's distort this shape. So we're gonna get a Voronoi and just throw it right there. We're gonna switch to F2, which creates a more detailed Voronoi and we're gonna go to Manhattan for the texture. Now let's bring our scale to 0.5. That's gonna be pretty cool. What we need to do now is get a mix and set it to color, bring it here. And what this is going to do is allow us to bypass this Voronoi texture we just added. So we can just add a little bit of the Voronoi. So if we bring the factor to one, just the original brick texture, and then you bring it in and it starts to 
change it a little bit and that gives us a really nice amount of variation. Last thing we need to do is add some color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this color ramp, hit Shift D and bring it down, plug the brick texture into the color ramp and plug that straight into the emission. And then now let's go ahead and pick our two colors. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with a light blue and we're gonna go with like a pure red. So bring the green, the blue back. And if we bring this back, we start to introduce our colors in random variation and that's what we have. Let's go back to the layout. I'm gonna click on this first plane right here and I'm gonna hit Alt D. And what that's going to do now, if I go to the render view, I'm gonna bring it up. And now we have two top and bottom. And then I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna hit Alt D and bring one down, hit this one, hit Alt D, bring this one up. And then now it's just a chaotic mess. So what we need to do is go to the world settings right here, go to volume, add volume, and then click on principled volume. And then now we're, we can add this fading effect with the density. So now we just have this. And so I'm gonna go ahead and bring this upper plane down a little bit and then bring this first plane up a little bit so that it's a little bit tighter on our camera. Now that we have this, go to the camera, camera settings, and I'm gonna add some depth of field because I don't like how sharp these are. If you like it, you can leave it, it's totally cool. I'll bring my f-stop down, and then you can bring your focus distance to kind of make it bigger or smaller, but I really like this blurring effect, especially when we go ahead and add our motion blur. All right, let's animate our camera. So let's bring it to, uh, you can leave it at 250 frames if you'd like, and what I'm gonna do here is uh, bring this up, and then right over here, I'm gonna hit the back arrow to start at frame zero. Now, in your preferences, make sure your default interpolation is linear. You can go to Edit, Preferences, Animation, Linear right here. Switch that to Linear. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the tilde key and go to the top. Click on my camera. And then what I'm going to do is right here on the Y keyframe, go to the very end. Now, hold down Control. It's very important. And you want the camera to stop at these lines, depending the farther you bring your camera, the faster the camera is going to go. So I'm going to get bring it four pieces. So one, two, three, four, and stop this anchor point right at the line. Now, if you're holding down control, that's very easy to accomplish. So make sure you're holding down control and then apply camera. So now if we press play, I'm gonna hit the hit zero and go to the camera view. We have perfect speed. I love it. All right. Now let's just go ahead and add some rotation. So click the back arrow to go to zero, click on your camera, go to the transform settings and on the Y, we're going to animate the Y. So click this, Go to the end, type in 360, and then click that keyframe again. And now we're getting an animation here. Now we're pretty much done. Depending on your preference, you may like it. It might be done here. What I'm going to do is add some motion blur. Now there's technically already motion blur there, but I'm going to make it look crazy. What I'm going to do is bring the shutter to five and then bring your steps down here to 10. So if I just click the render button, check this out. It just makes it look insane. And you might like that, you might not like that. But the but if we bring it down to like three steps and we click render, it's gonna look a little different. So the more steps, the more these like weird duplications that's gonna go across your scene, uh, you might just like it at one. And that's totally up to your preference. I'm gonna bump it up to five. Um, and it just kind of smears across and it looks cool and it creates these weird duplications. Um, but we are done. That's it. That's the animation. So now that we're done, let me just show you the export settings that I usually do for these EV animations. You can do a PNG sequence if you'd like. Um, if your computer's prone, to, uh, if your computer's prone to crashing, then do a PNG sequence. I'm going to go ahead and have it just give me an MP4. So I'm going to go to FF MPEG video, uh, click here to render, then click here to select where you want to render it. I mean, uh, export it. Encoding, we're gonna to go to MP4, or you can do QuickTime if you're on Mac. Medium quality to perceptually lossless, render, render animation, and when you're done, you're gonna have a very cool looking animation. Uh, that's my final result. I, that's my final result. If you post your, say on Instagram, be sure to tag me. I'd love to see what you guys are working on. Tag me on Twitter as well. Uh, but with that being said, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the Patreon if that's something you'd be interested in, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.